7.23 in Trinidad and Tobago. Well, the Oilfield Workers Trade Union, they are hosting uh, the Assistant General Secretary of the Industrial Global Union, which is based in Geneva, Switzerland. And they're having a special media conference this morning at 11 a.m. in front of BP's office. And to tell us more, we're joined by three personalities. Uh, first and foremost, closer to me, uh, we have uh, Fernando Lopez. He is the Assistant General Secretary of the Industrial Global Union from right down the road in Bahia in uh, Brazil. I don't know if he's familiar with David Rudders by a girl or anything uh, like like that but uh, he's not talking football after the 7-1 <laughs> in the World Cup semi-final not talking any football which is uh, understandable <laughs> yeah, which is understandable uh, but we have two other personalities that talk about this media conference and what's it all about uh, we have with that uh, with that Ozzy Warwick the education and research officer of the Oilfield Workers Trade Union and we also have with us a gentleman who was here with us just over a week ago uh, Ram Ram Nanan Narayan Singh. Ram, Ram, Ram Kumar Narayan Singh. Forgive me, I can't understand me on writing Ram Kumar. Forgive me. Ram Kumar Narayan Singh, second vice president of the Steel Workers Union. Good morning to you all. Good to have you hey, good, here good on morning, the program. Uh, Ozzy Warwick, lead sure. us off as to what this media conference at 11 o'clock is going to be all about. All right, basically, this media conference is part of what we call international workers' solidarity. Um, British uh, Petroleum T BPTT is part of a multinational cooperation. And w having one of our representatives from our international federation is to say to BP and other multinationals, because we also have Asel Mittal, which is another multinational here in Trinidad and Tobago, that workers here have solidarity or are in solidarity and are being supported by workers all over the world. So we are going to have this press conference to highlight some issues which we will at that time in terms of how multinational corporations are treating with workers here in Trinidad and Tobago. We think that that is important. As a matter of fact, a lot of people in Trinidad and Tobago don't realize how many multinationals we actually have isn't that good for the country that they bring jobs, they bring uh, levels of economic activity, they bring economic opportunities that your members might actually benefit from? Well, not to exploit our workers, f certainly, and not to create uh, working conditions that are a threat to their life and limb. And those are some of the issues we want to highlight. Uh, it is not thing, we're not saying that there's something wrong with having multinationals, but they also have to treat with our workers uh, with a certain level of respect and with a certain level of human dignity. And we want to highlight those issues so that multinationals know that they can come into Trinidad and uh, treat with our workers any less than anywhere else in the world. And that is why we have, uh, oh, that's why we are part of an international federation. So we have that international worker solidarity. And, and Senor Lopez, uh, if you can tell us from, from your experience, uh, this, this whole question of multinational corporations, uh, what, what to you is the danger? What, what are the, the issues for, for the working people uh, when you have multinational corporations in, 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 in your country? So, uh, good morning. It's, uh, the problem is that uh, the multinational itself is not uh, a problem. The problem is how they behave in, every, in each country. And the, 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 the role of the international union movement in my federation is to be sure that they have the similar treatment everywhere. That means have no explanation to how the multinational come here or there, exploit the resources, exploit the people, and they have no, the same condition that they have in their own country. That means uh, our struggle is to, be, to make sure that they have a standard uh, uh, work relation everywhere in the world. But isn't that impossible? Because you do find, uh, I'm sure even in your yeah. own country in Brazil, uh, where multinational corporations, there's a strong relationship yeah. with China yeah. uh, right now in Brazil, that multinational corporations will always go where they can get the best deal, where, they can, uh, where the regulations are not as strict as in other, uh, other countries. Is, isn't that correct to say? It's, it's, it's not correct, 100% correct, because mm -hmm. the, the, I think two months ago, the uh, International Monetary Fund found the IMF release I started that say the fl flow of investment, it makes no, sense, no direct relation of regulation or work condition. The multinationals go to make profit, also, okay? It's not necessary to make profit in, um, behind the, 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 work, the workers' condition. That means it's possible to have, uh, if you look at countries like Sweden, German, they have a good multinational, they have a good investment, and they have a good workers' condition, salary, etc. That means uh, it's not necessary to, if, if you only look for the tomorrow, 
could be could be right. Yes. So, but if you look in long term, sustainable development, they can they cannot only look for cheap labor and the and the uh, uh, no tax and the benefits from the government. They need to to, to think in, in more think long, term, long term. In long term, issue. Uh, as we talk long term, Ram Kumar Narayan Singh, is it fair to say that if it weren't for the multinational corporations? You wouldn't have a job in the uh, in, in the steel uh, industry because uh, ISCOT became ISPAT, which became ArcelorMittal, to a certain, uh, and the whole in, uh, issue of, of steel and, and investment in the steel industry. So it's because of, of of foreign investment. It's because of the multinational corporations that we have uh, a, a steel industry. Isn't that correct? Actually, um, the thing about it is that the steel industry was started by the government. So it probably would have continued to exist. It may not have been as profitable as it is now, right? So I wouldn't say that um, we would not have existed, but the profitability, the uh, market exposure, etc., cetera, et cetera. But you understand the point that I'm getting at, the, that, 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 that if it weren't for multinational corporations bringing in the greater revenue, expertise, and yes, I appreciate the concerns about exploitation of workers, right. but were it not for that intervention, uh, the steel industry may not have grown to the level that it has, and therefore uh, th there would be op op limited opportunities. And, uh, in that sense, uh, Ozzy Warwick, are you thro throwing out the baby with the bathwater in that regard? No, not at all. And as I said earlier, there isn't anything wrong with multinationals per se. What we have a problem with is when multinationals behave in a way that is uh, detrimental or a threat to our workers. Are they not, behaving that way in Trinidad and Tobago? Well, right we now? are going to talk a little bit about it this morning at the 11 o'clock, but we do, th th there are examples, several examples of multinationals that are flagrantly violating our labor laws, that they are not allowing workers to join a trade union of their choice, and which is a violation of their fundamental right. And so there are these examples, and we want to be able to highlight to Trinidad and Tobago, but also to send a message to the multinationals that no, we are not going to accept you coming in and just doing as you please. We are, we are a sovereign state and whilst we welcome the investment, whilst we welcome the opportunity for, um, for nationals to have jobs, but it cannot be that they have jobs working in conditions that are a risk to themselves and to their lives. And, and Mr. Lopez, the, the multinationals I might say, well, if you want to impose all these rules, all these regulations, all these restrictions, you want us to look to the long term, to the bigger picture, we'll just pack up and leave and take our business elsewhere and the country will lose out on jobs it's not uh, really true because uh, uh, you need to see how profit the business is and the this regulation it's a, it's a global regulation it's a uh, based in the ILO standards and it should to be uh, uh, put in place everywhere it's the same also they have a OECD they have a guideline for multinational that it should be to regulate. And they also, I don't understand why the multinational can follow the WTO uh, rules and cannot follow mm. the ILO rules. Mm. They, 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 it's, it's just a, a way to organize the business. To because to them, trade is important, World Trade Organization, <laughs> but labor, ILO, is not as important. Yeah, but for us, both are important. And oh. they both are part of the same uh, business. We need to have a fair work relation and also fair trade regulation. We are not against the trade. We are in favor of the trade. But the trade cannot be uh, uh, against the work rights or the human rights. Of, of, of course, the problem is that it's not only in Trinidad and Tobago that the multinational behave bad. The same multinational, if you talk about the BP, you can talk later, 11 o'clock in the press conference, they behave the same in Australia. It's a developed country, it's uh, far away from here, but the B why the BP have the bad behavior here and there? That means the problem is not, it's not in that Tobago, it's not the our people, but it's the multinational itself, they have uh, a bad behavior. And before we conclude, and, and I know all the details will come out in the media conference yeah. at 11 o'clock this morning, uh, and again it's going to be in front of the, the BP offices. That's right. uh, are you sure they're not going to have police there to chase you all away? Ah, no. <laughs> well. If they have police there to chase us away, we will uh, 
we will continue our press conference. We are not afraid of that. All right. Uh, we've, well, we've, I realize we've what we're doing on Friday. We've been <laughs> that's, that's another story, <laughs> by the way, which we don't have time to go into, I'm unfortunately. Sure we, I'm sure you will have us back to I, talk I, a I, I bit would about love that. To, to have that opportunity. But, but very, very quickly before, before we conclude, yes. is it a case really of not so much the fault of the multinational corporations, but the local laws being and for implemented, enforced, and strictly adhered to by the administrations within the country. I mean, this has always been our issue, which is you have labor legislation where you have employers who are flagrantly violating the, the labor legislation. Now, we already have weak labor legislation in the first place, including our Occupational uh, Safety and Health Act. But as weak as they are, they still exist. And there has to come a time where we do not and cannot allow employers to flagrantly violate our labor laws, including our occupational safety and health legislation. Gentlemen, we'll wait to see uh, what happens. It's not uh, too long again, three and a half hours uh, to go before before that meeting. Thanks very much uh, for joining us uh, this morning. And indeed, not enough time to talk about what went on down in Charlie King Junction. I can, I can oh, see the excitement uh, what? in your eyes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm uh, keen to talk about that. And I'm not afraid to come back and talk about it. can't even talk football. But uh, what, with, I, what we would like to Lopez. also talk about is our performance appraisal of the government and, and the Prime Minister. I'm <laughs> waiting for that too, <laughs> uh, the, in, in that regard. Thanks very much, gentlemen, for, for, for joining us. And we wait to see what happens at that media conference at 11 o'clock in front of VP uh, this morning. We'll take a break and continue on Morning Edition.